about a year before I started there, the CEO of our largest customer stood up in one of those appreciation dinners and said, I know we're celebrating that we buy a lot from you, but I'm looking forward to buying more from your competitors if they can bring their technology first to market because you're really arrogant and hard to do business with. This was a huge wake up call for our executives and they became very serious about customer experience. So that was a real blessing to me as I started there as a the voice of the customer manager and worked my way up to head of corporate quality along with several marketing uh, director roles before I left there over the course of 11 years. Luckily, when I stepped into this role, they had an operationalized strategy. This means that everyone could see clearly what needed to be done and they were taking action to make customer experience a way of life in the company. I wanna give you a preview into this course and tell you a little bit more about the courses at clearaction.com and how they set you up to not only excel in customer experience, but also in employee experience and partner experience using the same principles. Let's take a peek at three slides from the operationalized strategy class. I'm going to talk about the CX ecosystem and uh, tell you about a time when a, a man from South America called me and said, Lynn, I'm the head of customer service in the largest company in my country. And we've won several awards in our region uh, about most ethical place to work, plus best place to work, things like that. Now our C-suite has asked me to make sure that we have the same level of performance and customer experience. But as I'm reading your articles, Lynn, I'm seeing that Customer experience is much broader than customer service. So how can I go about helping the C team understand what's needed? I said, why don't we sketch out what your customer steps are for their buying process and start with that as a discussion piece for your C-suite. So here you can see what we wrote out and I included at the end what the customer integrates the solution with as being a very important uh, aspect of understanding what your strategy needs to entail, uh, understanding how different groups of customers expect different things. Because after all, when you can close the gap between what customers experience or what the realities are versus their expectations, that's a good experience. That's the definition of business success is when you have that that one-to-one uh, -one ratio between the realities and the expectations, your customers will automatically keep coming back to you. So we sketched out two more rows here. The middle one is what's done in daily work to fulfill the customer's processes step-by-step -step here. And then the bottom row is what are the capabilities that uh, are, are generated in the company to help that daily work happen. So here you can see in his words, the various things that they do for daily work to meet the customer journey steps, and then what they do behind the scenes to help the daily work happen. And because his role is in customer service, we put a star by all the things that com come into customer service inquiries frequently. Now, the next time we met, he said, I'm so sorry I'm late. We've been having these escalation meetings all week long. One of our biggest customers is refusing to pay us because there's a misunderstanding in the terms and conditions. I said, wow, I bet that's taking up a lot of uh, time of senior people who are paid a lot. It's probably costing a lot when you add it all together. He stopped to think about that and said, yes, um, that, you know, that's a really good point. We are taking up a lot of our, our resources for this. I said, who's in charge of terms and conditions? And is it on this slide? Sure enough, there it is under decide and buy the terms and conditions. Uh, responsibility is by the legal team. So I asked him, do you think 
legal should be part of your customer experience strategy? Well, clearly, if they're not, we're going to continue to have more escalation meetings and other things that uh, cost the company uh, rep in its reputation, in uh, money and, and uh, people to address those issues. So everyone who has a star by their area certainly needs to be part of the customer experience strategy and probably everyone else as well because any one of these groups can mess up the customer experience and therefore they all have a responsibility to prevent issues in the first place and also to resolve any issues that do arise. So an ecosystem is like the Brazilian rainforest where you've got living and non-living things that have interdependencies. And if you take one out or there's an ailment in one, it has a ripple effect, kind of a domino effect or a snowball effect to almost everything else. Keep in mind that we have rituals in our companies that aren't really about creating the solution that the customer buys or delivering it, but there are things that we do in a company so that the right hand knows what the left hand's doing, so that all the players in the different roles in your company can uh, be on the same page and be coordinated. So there's internal planning, funding, reviewing, rewarding, reporting, communicating, advancement, and training. And if you can insert customer experience criteria into each of these rituals, you're going to have more automatic CX excellence. And that's what we're really striving for. That's our strategic purpose is almost automatic CX excellence, therefore minimal waste, maximum gains, with uh, almost organically without having to so-called fertilize through uh, large budgets and uh, teams to spur that engagement and organic growth. So for greater strategic impact, you would want to weave in the customer experience insights to every part of your ecosystem. And I prioritize them here just to help uh, figure out uh, how, how should you approach this so that you're, um, you're creating a kind of concentric circles of, uh, of impact and, um, and effort. So customer experience strategy is what share, executives share as a vision for how to maximize value through customer experience. And operationalized means that we're routinizing this strategy into the way the business is run. So every March, every October, you know, whatever, every strategic planning cycle, every performance review, every all hands meeting, whatever, what have you, is going to have a customer experience element of some type that people expect. And it's just a way of life. That's how we do things in our company. Now, this diagram is also quite important to customer experience strategy because um, all of these building blocks are necessary for the system to flow. It's kind of like your body. Imagine each of these building blocks as an organ in your body. You've got the skeletal system, the muscular system, the nervous system, the digestive system, and, and so on. And any one of those that it's missing well, you're not going to be living for sure, for sure or you're going to have a, a, a poor uh, quality of life. Let's do another analogy. Think about uh, human resources. Um, if human resource chief officer this year said, well, um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of maxed out. This year, we're just going to be upgrading our technology for employee complaints and all that other stuff about onboarding and development and recognition and, and so on. Well, we just can't get to it this year. Let's do it next year. You know, as let's just kind of expand as we can go. That might've been okay in 1960 or some crazy, some long ago time like that when we did have much narrower uh, treatment of a, a, an area like human resources, but in no other place in the company would it be 
acceptable for uh, a functional area of major discipline like customer experience to just choose a portion of what that is and say that's all we are. The customer experience is an end-to-end -end journey and it incorporates these competencies from the CCXP as we know, the voice of the customer, intelligence and lifetime value, improvement and innovation and design, engagement internally and externally. You've got your culture and strategy leading to the metrics and analytics, right? So all of these things need to be done at least in baby steps the first year, and then let's you know take it up a notch the next year and further and further on a roadmap of increasing sophistication year by year. So the strategic purpose behind customer experience is sustained brand differentiation. So your strategy should aim to establish that, not to just differentiate this month or this quarter, but to have differentiation that lasts for years, to have magnetic customer attraction for both the existing customers and the new customers, that your brand is just a, a, a hand in glove feeling for them to the extent that they're uh, automatically attracted to, to keep coming back to your company and to uh, engage and recommend and, and things like that without having to have major programs necessarily to achieve that. And then thirdly, of course, we want to make sure that customer experience efforts result in ongoing financial growth. And that's at two levels, isn't it, at least, because you've got the costs and the revenue, and you want to be increasing that profitability by reducing the costs while you're increasing the number of customers you're you're serving and the, the share of wallet that they are um, blessing your company with. So for a strategic impact, you want to make sure that your customer experience strategy is achieving a DNA, uh, is affecting your DNA as a company. This is going to be an outline for how your customer experience insights shape your corporate strategy your corporate structure and policies, both internal and external. It's an outline for how customer experience insights shape adoption and accountability of customer experience insights across every group, and therefore shaping their thinking and their doing, the, co the culture that each group has in your company overall. Your CX strategy will an outline for how CX insights shape improvement and design and innovation of the customer experience and anything else that you're uh, generating for growth in the company. Everything should be have a customer experience insights basis. And it will also be an outline for how you are going to be collecting the metrics and reporting those, how you're driving retention and loyalty and return on investment. So essentially, this experience strategy section that we're talking about is the culmination of all the other competencies that we cover in this course. And you want to be managing all of these building blocks as a flow. You know, we did a five-year benchmarking study at Clear Action, and uh, we were looking at practices globally. And we found that there was a tremendous amount of effort in customer voice and engaging externally. But there was very little in the middle, relatively speaking. And there was also quite a lot of effort in this, uh, this target area. Very little in the strategy and the culture. So it made me think of this very famous advertisement on the television some years ago here in America for Wendy's hamburgers. A little old lady comes into the hamburger restaurant, orders a hamburger, and she gets this bun. She opens it up, and there's a tiny little beef patty. She says to the guy, where's the beef? And it became just a hilarious uh, part of Americana for, me, for, for a long time. This is what I thought of when I looked at the first benchmarking study that I saw a big bun here, 
and a big bun here. And I was saying, where's the beef? <laughs> so it is kind of not human to human. Or uh, if you think about Jane, Jean Bliss's book, uh, would you do that to your mother? Uh, to just ask, how are we doing? Would you, would you do this for me? Would you do that for me? Uh, and then, hey, can you go ahead and uh, engage with us without actually acting on what they told you? Showing respect for that, making real change that generates their desire to engage with you without you having to invite them necessarily or, or you know, just making things more natural. <laughs> in a human to human way. So this is what we're trying to do with customer experience strategy, pull it all together, make it flow and provide an outline for bringing it to life. So it becomes routinized and for maturity and scalability, you'd want your C team to have this shared vision for how customer centered business will maximize value and uh, make that their North star for how they guide the business. Customers are the hand that feeds you. They pay for your salaries, your budgets, and for investors' dividends. So it only makes sense that, that our, our customer insights would serve as a North Star for all the decisions in a company if we can set it up the right way. So uh, also you'd, you'd find out that the um, customer experience implications are integral to every strategic pillar, to all the processes and policies and reviews and decisions in accordance with that North Star idea that I just shared. So in a nutshell, this is the last slide I'm going to give you in this preview for operationalized strategy. This is a template that you could use to get started in answering what we just showed on the past slide. How is each of these building blocks in the model going to come to life. And as we mentioned, the first year you want to do the baby steps, just activating the system so that people understand voice leads to intelligence, which leads to improvement and innovation, which leads to engagement and um, retention. Now, internal engagement and external engagement actually happen from the very beginning because we have the culture, the strategy, and the voice all at the very beginning. Um, but I put them here as a mirror image because, first of all, you should be earning employee external engagement um, because they don't really owe you to engage with you. <laughs> they've already paid fair market price for what they've gotten. And beyond that, you should be doing giving them extra value if you want to be getting extra value. And I put engaging internally as a mirror image because we're quite typically in engaging internally and quite bold about engaging externally, which is backwards. Um, it only makes sense to expect customers to engage the extent that we are engaging ourselves. Uh, Non-customer facing groups in particular are usually the ones who create the lion's share of the issues that customers are grappling with. And, you know, all the internal people their bread and butter, their, their paycheck, their budgets are dependent upon customers funding those jobs and uh, customers being satisfied enough to keep choosing your brand over their other alternatives. So it's all in the way you set things up that brings this to life and makes it work like a well-oiled machine. So if you were to attend this course, you would have uh, the much broader perspective of how to, how to do all this and what goes into each of these building blocks. And of course, we cover in each of the different chapters of the class. This is, gives you a quick peek into the two workbooks that we have for every uh, competency. One is an introductory or basics uh, workbook, and then the other one is advanced. Um, generally, the content from the CCXP exam will be largely contained in this basics workbook. And then the um, advanced workbook will help you with those questions where there are more than one good answer, but you have to choose the one best answer. So your, your understanding and your, uh, 
your trajectory of, of thinking about CX is just on a different plane when you've gone through this advanced section. So in closing, I just wanted to uh, remind you that you can go to clearaction.com slash leader for the advanced version of this course for customer, employee, and partner experience. This is specifically for executives and experts uh, of all types. And then uh, also, of course, we have the CCXP or CX enthusiast course at clearaction.com slash CX hyphen leader. And that one we have it multiple times per week. Uh, the advanced class we have on Fridays. Finally, if you'd like to uh, go further with this idea of strategic impact, maturity and scalability, uh, making customer experience a team sport among all the non-customer facing groups, um, really uh, creating a customer centric company that performs well over and above your industry norms, this is the place to come. Almost all of our classes are included in the experience value exchange. And you'll see that here we have ease of business competencies and three ease of work competencies where you can earn badges as you learn about uh, how to influence these things in your department, with your counterparts and across your whole ecosystem. When, when these uh, six competencies really take root, across your company, you're going to have almost automatic excellence for CX, EX, and PX. So this is a, your invitation to also join clearaction.com slash team hyphen sport, the experience value exchange, where you can learn in five minute bites, as well as uh, 20, 40 minute bites, share information, uh, share resources with fellow members, and uh, and get solutions on the on the fly to challenges that pop up throughout your day or throughout your week. So thank you very much for coming to clearaction.com. Hundreds of people have passed the exam just based on our course without any other resources at all. And uh, you can too. Experience leadership is what we're all about. This means company-wide alignment to your key stakeholders' expectations, those key stakeholders being your customers, your employees, and your partners. And we believe that this is the next horizon for excellence in experience management. But we need to go beyond the program and uh, standalone department uh, approaches of current practices to have much greater strategic impact in the world at large making life better for our customers and for employees and partners across the world. Welcome to Experience Leadership with Clear Action. Hope to, I'm hoping to see you soon.